Hi, I'm Mara Webster with InCreative Company, and thank you so much for tuning into one of our talks today. I'm so excited today to be talking all things Netflix Lucifer with Inbar Levy. And the first thing I wanted to dive into talking about was when you first got this role, because it was actually from one, one of the writers being a huge fan of your work in Imposters. And then with that in mind, it sounds like they started to really write this role with you in mind when you first came onto the show in season four. And so when you first got those scripts, did you find that there were things that really spoke to a lot of your skills as an actor or were there elements that you could see in the character that really spoke to you from the way that they'd written her specifically um yeah it, it's uh it's an interesting it's an interesting situation to be in because like you said I was so lucky to have Chris Rafferty um watch imposters while they were writing this character and kind of yes write it for me but then again is it writing it for me? Because I'm really playing a character or I should say several characters on Imposters. So who is he really writing it for? But um, yeah, I, I, I think he was picking up on some <clears throat> of the general essence of what I bring to the screen. And um, luckily I love all those aspects of, uh, of Eve. I think, you know, uh, I think we share a lot of very similar qualities and, um, and, you know, I, I love that about her. I can slide into her very naturally. And because you were coming into the show when it was already a few seasons in and already in motion and, and it kind of already found its voice as a series, mm -hmm. what were the ways in which you were looking for details, either watching episodes beforehand or when you first arrived on set that really helped inform the tone and voice of your character in a way that she could fit into this world that was already created? Um, that's a great question. You know, I obviously I was aware of the phenomenon that is Lucifer. Uh, I think it's more than a voice. I think it's like a very loud echo <laughs> that goes throughout the universe. And um, and, you know, I wasn't I wasn't watching the show at the time. And I kind of make it a rule for myself when I go into like a moving vehicle to not really worry too much about fitting in. In fact, I kind of want to bring my own flair. And um, especially with the show that's been around for four seasons or three seasons at the time, it was it was really great for me to bring in like a breath of fresh air. Um, and, uh, specifically with Eve, she was coming into a brand new world that she's never experienced. So the more of that, that I could bring in naturally, the more realistic it would be for everyone around and for Eve. So it worked out. And one of the things that I love so much about the show is its comedic sensibility and the fact that actually a lot of the comedic sensibility comes from it being very grounded in emotional truth with these characters. So do you find that when you're thinking about the comedic moments in the show for yourself, that you're having to consciously think about what that comedic voice for Eve is going to be and what the delivery is going to be? Or do you find that because it's always grounded in character that it's just naturally flowing from the writing on the page? Uh, it's probably a mixture of both. You know, we have we have such wonderful writers who are always very good at keeping things grounded, even though these are out of this world situations. Um, and they're always rooted in um, really honest, deep, complicated um, um, scenarios. And so for me, as long as I just hang on to the truth of it and be true to my character backbone, then I'll be able to maneuver between those two and not land in a over the top character, you know, character -y planet. Although I do land there from time to time. I'm like, it's so fun too, you know, to just go big like that it kind of feels like a theater sometimes on that set so it's a balance you have to balance all of those things together 
I'm also really fascinated by the character development process, particularly when it comes to creating backstory for a character like Eve, because like you just said, a lot of the situations are literally larger than life. And particularly when you look at your character and you also know the audiences are coming with preconceived notions of who this character might be. So when you're developing her backstory and thinking about scenarios that are so extreme and so large, but then again, you know, the same as the comedy, very much written with a lot of truth and emotion. How was the backstory development part of your process really similar to other roles or were there ways in which it did feel a little bit different because of the scope of what you were thinking about for her? Uh, you know, you would you would think that because it's so out of this world scenario that the preparation would, you know, have to kind of fit into that. But in actuality, it really wasn't. It was it was exactly the same way I would approach any other character. And, you know, the questions would be, where is she coming from? Where where does she want to go? Um what is she passionate about? What's bothering her? Um, you know, what's her truth? What's her voice? Who are her friends? What does she want? It's, and it's all the same. And um, I think once you humanize the character, whatever character you play, it can be a, an alien. But as long as you humanize it, then human beings who are watching it can relate. And um, I think that's the challenge. So that's what I've been trying to do. It also seems like you've always taken this concept of, you know, a woman who's been accused of wrongdoing by, I mean, literally everyone and have really turned that into her having a lot of compassion and understanding for other people because she knows what it's like to be on the other side of things. And so how has that informed a lot of the interactions and relationship dynamics that you've created for Eve throughout the entire run of the show because of always wanting to lead with that aspect of compassion for other people? You know, I think I tend to really um, go for those kinds of characters that have been misunderstood or overlooked or, you know, have made mistakes because that's what we do. And God knows I have made plenty. And um, for me, it was really, really important to... Um, to kind of give her side of the story. Um, and so whenever people tell me that they were able to really feel for her and understand her, I'm like, great, did it. Um, <laughs> but um, at the same time, you know, the arc of Eve has really twisted in different ways than I could have ever imagined. When my first meeting in the room with the producers happened, we were discussing a certain type of arc. And then we're talking now three seasons later, and it's very different from what I knew was coming. So you kind of have to keep things very um, um, loose and go with the flow and um, find it as you go is the best way I can describe it. In shooting these final episodes with that in mind, were the writers and producers able to give you what her full emotional arc leading towards the finale was gonna be? Or was some of that still a little bit up in the air when you first started shooting your first scenes? So obviously a lot of it is still being processed and um, twisted in different directions. And so there was a general sense of what's coming, but nothing set in stone and I, I really have to commend the, you know, the showrunners of the show, LD and Joe for being so awesome and welcoming to our creative input. And, you know, it was going in a certain direction and I kind of, I had my own opinion and I voiced it and they listened and, it, you know, it shifted in that direction, uh, which I'm so grateful for. And um, I think that's really a show of good writing of any sorts and creating because, you know, art is something that changes. And if you're attentive and you're smart enough to listen, then it can be better than what you had envisioned to begin with. 
Absolutely. And with that change in mind as well, I, I thought it was so fun the way that you would always talk in the early episodes about how Eve was such a great character and you had such a great time with the playfulness of how she could really push Chloe and Lucifer in completely different ways and pull out different sides of them. You know, mm -hmm. and then when you look at the dynamic with Maze, that brings out an entirely different side of Eve as well. So mm -hmm. even once you formed a character like Eve, how are you consistently working in each of these scenes with different scene partners and thinking about the different aspects of her personality and the different characteristic traits that are gonna come out from this relationship and this dynamic? I think it all really depends on, it depends on two things. It depends on how much work um, or homework I have done. You know, if I really dove in, in depth, then I'll, I'll know, I'll have more tools and more ideas would come to me in a scene, like the scene with, uh, with Maze and um, the gift that Lucifer sends in. It's like a fax machine. And, you know, me being Eve and coming down from Earth, I've never seen a fax machine, so I don't know how to work it. And I look at that, you know, the, the plug you put in the wall and you're looking, that's, that was all improv. Like, that was just me looking at it and knowing Eve wouldn't know to put that in the wall. She's never seen one. So things like that in a moment would come up with someone like Maze, who is, you know, so full of different emotions or you know, impulses that Eve isn't even aware exists because she's a demon. Um, but also at the same time, it's so completely driven by the actual person in front of me. Like, you know, Leslie Ann is a force of nature. You know, when I'm, <laughs> when I'm around that woman, it's impossible not to react because there's so much coming at you. And, you know, I can do all the homework I want and then I'll show up and she'll do something so fabulous and I'll have to be in the moment and catch it or, you know, throw it back at her or play around. And the same thing goes for all the incredible cast. I mean, God, Tom Alice was just a, it was a playground. It was like, you catch this and I'll throw that and hang on what's coming, you know, it was just constant fun. And, um, yeah, it's it's a mixture of all those things. And the scenes with you and Leslie Ann are so phenomenal to watch in these in these final episodes as well. And in particular, I love the moment where you first come back and the two of you are kind of together and just figuring out what that dynamic is with all the time that's passed and all of their emotional history together. And so what was the journey of the two of you working together and figuring out all of the emotional layering that was going to go into those first few scenes together when they see each other again? You know, I think we were just so excited to be back on set together. And, um, you know, there's, there's, there's chemistry and, you know, this electricity that comes from just two human beings that connect that you don't have, you don't have to do much. It's not like we sat there and we were like, oh, wait, hang on. So she comes from this and she was just going through this and now she's this. It's not, it's so she's already shot all the scenes leading up to it. So she knows what she's feeling. And, you know, I'm just showing up with my big bulging eyes, just excited to, you know, just jump her. And I, it comes very naturally. I think these characters have lived in us for so long now that everything kind of gets pushed aside. And all I try to focus on now when I'm working on that show um, is just being in the moment and being really, really present. Yeah. Because she has, as you were just saying, because she's lived in you so much at this point, and a lot of it is second nature once you've inhabited a character that much, you know, at the same time, there's such an art to reintroducing a character when an amount of time has passed. Did you find it useful to think in depth about, okay, this is what she would have been doing during this time, you know, going off becoming a bounty hunter, this is what this is, you know, to figure out her, emo her emotional state and how she would be the same character but have slightly shifted characteristics because of that? Or did you mm -hmm. find that it was just second nature just to jump back into that and pick back up with these same characters you know what's crazy is that I had coffee with Chris Rafferty who is the writer who wrote me as Eve to begin with um, while we were on hiatus so I hadn't had any idea of what's coming but we were just talking and you know chatting about how fun it would be if you know Eve had her own you know 
sidekick show and she would like what would she do and what if she started you know bounty hunting and you know started you know protecting herself owning herself becoming more independent because the journey has been she's always been so dependent on other people for her happiness for um her purpose and what if her purpose now is to protect others and to be of service of others and you know come into her own and i thought that was so cool and i started developing that in my head so when the script started coming and i knew that that's what they were writing i had already had like a vision of this in my head so i was just like <laughs> And you also have so many great action sequences coming into this. And, and obviously there's a, there's a culminating scene with a lot of the characters together and the choreography mm -hmm. of that scene is really, really incredible to watch. And in particular, because every character moves in different ways, has different weapons or doesn't have weapons, you know, in different styles of combat technique. And so I just wanted to ask about the journey of, of the choreography of that scene all coming together. And in particular, in the way that it, again, it just always leads with character, even in that moment. Mm -hmm. Always. I mean, listen, I, I do Pilates, but I, <laughs> I don't buy demons for breakfast. And so, you know, all I can really rely on is what I do best, which is, you know, staying true to character and trying to know my lines and, you know, being honest and truthful. Um, and then we have really talented stunt coordinators and, and, you know, stunt like athletes that come in and make us look good. Um, you know, I've done a lot of stunts before, but particularly in this sequence that you're describing, um, which I think you mean like the big, the, the finale. Um, unfortunately, yes, we were, uh, we were supposed to come in and do all the choreography and learn it, but it was COVID time. It was the, that scene was left, like we didn't get to it, COVID hit and we were in quarantine. So they really just used the very, very minimal of us of what they could. And um, I don't know, I hope it looks good. I don't know, <laughs> you've seen it. But uh, it definitely felt major and, um, and exciting. And, and they did, they always do an amazing job. Yeah, it looks really, really great. And cool. you mentioned earlier with working with Tom as a scene partner, how he just kind of like throws things at you and there's a real, you know, professional playfulness to that. And, you know, the way that you've talked in the past, it sounds like he's someone who really encourages you to take a lot of risks as well when you're shooting scenes and to try the more extreme version and see what happens. And yeah. so I, I wanted to ask you about what are some of the risks that you feel like that has encouraged you to take with your character and your performance in the show? I, I mean, I would have to say there's so many instances that I'm thinking about, but if I have to, you know, really just narrow it down, it's mainly to not be lazy because, you know, there's a lot of really hardworking people on this show, but I don't think anyone works as hard as Tom Ellis and it shows and he can take a, a simple scene and turn it into a uh, delicacy because he's so prepared and he's so good at what he does and so original and smart that he brings it to life in a really special way. And when you're witnessing that, you want to step it up, <laughs> you know? So for me, I'm, I'm always that person on set. So for me, being met with that it was like okay well how can I you just want to you just want to give it your all and um I think that's really all you can ask for from a scene partner you know or any partner in life really is for them to challenge you um so I think that's what it is he was just challenging me all the time is that the same in working with Lauren as well? Because you've described how she's just such a present and grounded scene partner to work with, you know? And so when you have that level of presence in a scene, when you're working on something together, does that again, just really elevate what you feel you're able to bring into that moment as well? Yeah. You know, I really, if there's one thing that bums me out 
<clears throat> is that I didn't get to work with Lauren enough on this show. And I hope one day I'll get to do like a comedy with this woman because she's the funniest human I've ever met. Um, but, you know, yes, she is very, very present and very grounded. And she has this massive heart and kindness to her that just puts you at ease. You know, um, I just feel very, very safe with her. And that's also really wonderful to have in a, in a partner in a scene. But more than anything, she just really makes me laugh. Like I just, I just adore being around her. And uh, I think everyone does. I'm going to be gunning for a, a duo act comedy with the two of you now. <laughs> oh my God, that would be awesome. I also wanted to ask you about what the challenges have been that have been really the really unique aspect of playing this character and working on this show. And, you know, so essentially, like, what are the aspects that have challenged you the most about Lucifer? The aspects that challenged me the most about Lucifer. I think I had to um, like I caught myself judging the character a lot of times, you know, because um, it is it is a very successful show around the world for a reason, you know, it's um, someone can sit in Japan and, and watch the show and know very little English and still understand it because the concepts are very simple. And sometimes when I would read the scenes, the simplicity of it, I would judge it. And, um, you know, I, I come from doing Shakespeare. So obviously I, you know, I would catch myself really. And that's, that's death to a scene. That's death to a character. If you're judging what you're about to do, then everyone else is going to as well. And um, to me, it was a really great lesson of how to find complexity and layers and depth in something that on the surface can seem not that complicated. And I was amazed to find all, you know, all those other avenues I can dive into and really bring life into, you know, what I was given. And I'm so grateful for, it was a plethora of colors and emotions. And I'm just, I'm so, so lucky that I got to, that I can connect with so many people around the world because of this opportunity. So, you know, um, I think that was the biggest challenge for me. And which of your scenes was the last scene that you filmed and what was the emotional experience of knowing that you were coming onto set for the last time with everybody there? Oh my gosh. First of all, I, I didn't know, you know, they had, they had like two last scenes. They had the last, last scene with Tom and Lauren. And then they had the pre last scene with, you know, the other side characters. And I was invited. I was in that group and I had no idea that I would be, you know, I'm not a regular on the show. It's like, every time they invite me to play, I'm like, really? And you know, and it was, um, it was really um, overwhelming because I didn't expect, yeah, I wasn't on the show from the beginning. Again, I'm not a regular on the show. It's not my show. So I didn't expect to become so emotional, but because of the deep, deep gratitude I feel for how they've welcomed me in as one of their own, it, I was, you know, I was crying like a child. Um, you know, the one of the showrunners, Ildi, did this thing. She went around the room to each of the actors and uh, described them in a word. And it was so moving and so dead on. She just nailed every, every actor. And, um, and it was just like, we were just bawling our eyes out. It was, uh, it was a really emotional day and very special. I'm very grateful I got to be there. What was the word that she used to describe you? soulfulness. I love it. That's such a beautiful sentiment to be able to end a show on. And thank you mm -hmm. so much for taking time to have this conversation with us this afternoon. Thank you so much. What great questions. I'm now I'm excited to watch the show. <laughs> <laughs>